and here is an example of resistors in series and in parallel. So if we look at the circuit on the picture, all the resistors are 20 ohms. Part A is to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit, and Part B to find the potential difference, that is the voltage across all the resistors, and to find the current going through those resistors. If you're doing a problem like this from a textbook, you want to recopy the circuit. If you're doing this on a test, you have to feel free to scribble all over the picture that they're going to give you. So here I've redrawn my resistors, and the first thing I'm going to worry about is which ones are in series and which ones are in parallel. So here's a tip if you're having trouble identifying which resistors are in series and which ones are in parallel. Start by highlighting the wires around every resistor. When you do this, you realize that some resistors are connected together. For example, R3 and R4 are connected to the same two junctions. I see the red and orange wires meet at one end of the resistors, and the red and orange wires meet at the other end of the resistors. So R3 and R4, definitely in parallel. I could tell you about the other relationships right now, but I think it's a better idea to start with the two that we can identify and simplify the circuits step by step. The equivalent resistance for R3 and R4 is the inverse of 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4, and the inverse of 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 is simply 10 ohms. Now I can redraw the circuit, and instead of drawing R3 and R4 separately, I'll draw R3, 4 together. And once you draw R3, 4 and R5, you can see that those two are in series. So R3, 4 plus R5 is simply 30 ohms. So we're going to take R3, 4 and R5 and draw those together and see what the relationship is with R2. The equivalent of 3, 4, 5 is in parallel with R2. Let's calculate the equivalent resistance of that. 1 over R2 is 1 over 20 plus 1 over 3, 4, 5, which is 1 over 30, and taking the inverse of that is 12 ohms. What do you think we're going to do next? Yes, we are going to redraw the equivalent circuit with 3, 4, 5 and 2 put together. Of course, unless your teacher makes it a specific requirement, you don't have to redraw the circuit every time as long as it's clear how you're calculating the equivalent resistances. If your teacher does make it a requirement, then of course redraw them. I am redrawing for demonstration purposes. Finally, R1, the equivalent of R2, 3, 4, and 5, and R6 are in series. Adding everything up, makes an equivalent resistance of 52 ohms. Let's figure out voltages and currents right now. Well, the main branch I've highlighted in orange, and I know that the current coming out of the battery and coming into the battery have to be the same, and so it's going to be the same current through R1 and through R6. And for that, all we need is Ohm's law. So V is equal to Ri, rearranged so that the total current is the total voltage over the total resistance, and our 12 volt battery, to which an equivalent resistance of 52 ohms is connected, provides 0.23 amperes of current. And that means that the current through resistor 1 and the current through resistor 6 is also 0.23 amperes. And the voltage across resistor 1 is R1 multiplied by the current, 4.6 volts, and the voltage across resistor 6 is, once again, the resistance multiplied by the current, another 4.6 volts. Now, the fact that these two voltages are the same is just because they're equal resistances and there's the same current through them. Now let's figure out how much voltage is across resistor 2. I'm looking at the loop on the left hand side of the picture, and I know that the amount of energy provided by the battery has to be equal to the amount of energy consumed by the resistors. Therefore, 12 volts provided by the battery minus the voltage across resistor 1 minus the voltage across resistor 6 gives me the voltage across resistor 2. 2.8 volts. 
and with that information I can get the current in resistor 2. The current in resistor 2 is the potential difference across resistor 2 divided by the resistance, 0 0.14 amperes. Now to figure out the voltages and currents in the other resistors, I'm going to redraw the diagram yet again. Now from the junction that I've circled in orange, we can see that current I1 is equal to current I2 plus current I5. And that's a good thing because we know I1 and we know I2, so we can figure out I5 and then work our way backwards from there. So I5 is equal to I1 minus I2, and that gives us I5 is 0 0.09 amperes. Now that we have the current through resistor 5, we can figure out the voltage across it. The voltage across resistor 5 is 20 times 0 0.09, 1.8 volts. Now the voltage across R3 and R4 will be the same because they are in parallel and we are going to use a loop rule as we used for resistor number 2. The voltage across resistor number 2 has to be the same as the voltage across resistor number 4 plus the voltage across resistor number 5. So I can write down that the voltage across number 4 is equal to the voltage across number 2 minus the voltage across number 5. That makes the voltage across resistor number 4 and the voltage across resistor number 3 2.8 minus 1.8, 1 volt. All that's left is the current through these last two resistors. In both cases, we take the voltage and divide by the resistance, and we get 0.05 amperes through resistor number 3 and through resistor number 4. Now, these two currents are the same only because we have two identical resistors in parallel. If R3 and R4 were different, they would still have the same voltage across them, but they would have different currents. Let's do a bit of checking here. The current through R3 plus the current through R4 should be equal to the current through I5, which they are when you take into account rounding errors. And as I'm saying this, I'm realizing I should have paid more attention to significant figures, especially on those last two currents. Nonetheless, the example hopefully was helpful to you. <laughs> Spread the joy of physics.